If you're a woman between the ages of 35 and 50 and are struggling with unexplained weight gain and you feel like it might be hormonally related, we're going to talk about one of those hormones that can contribute to weight gain in perimenopause today and it's called leptin. Stay tuned to learn more about leptin and weight gain. If you're between 35 and 50 and want to learn more about hormone balance, hit the subscribe and the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Friday. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. I'm a registered dietitian, functional medicine physician, and family medicine physician. And I'm here to help women go from struggling with that hormonal roller coaster that happens during perimenopause to feeling balanced, feeling like themselves again, and reclaiming their feminine energy. One of the ways we can do that is to talk about perimenopause and weight gain. Quite often that doesn't really get talked about very often, and it's such a common symptom of perimenopause. So we've been focusing on that. This is video three in the series, and we're talking about one of the hormones that can contribute, and it's called leptin. And leptin's main role is to try to regulate energy, including the number of calories that we eat and the number of calories that we expend, and as well as the fat storage in our body. Its primary target is in the brain and on the hypothalamus. And leptin's supposed to tell us, tell our brain that we have enough fat stored, we don't need to eat or burn, we don't need to eat more, and we can burn more calories um, at a normal rate. Now, when I talked two weeks ago in the first part of this series about leptin, we learned that in perimenopause, leptin is a bit imbalanced. Um, it can track with estrogen and follow estrogen rising when our estrogen rises. So you would think that rising leptin is, is a good thing. But when we start with a little bit of extra weight on us, we can become leptin resistant and our, and our leptin doesn't rise as much with the estrogen rise. So we can become leptin resistant. And the more fat we put on, the more resistant we can become to leptin. It's almost like insulin resistance. So then we don't respond the way that we are supposed to with regulating our energy intake and regulating our calories and everything like that, that goes along with what leptin should be doing. So what we're dealing with really when we struggle with weight gain, one of the things, it's not all about leptin, but one of the things is leptin resistance. So let's talk more about leptin resistance. So with leptin resistance, your brain doesn't receive that signal that it, it's supposed to receive from leptin, and then we can um, think that we're starving and it can cause our bodies to regain. So then your brain is encouraged to eat more and to reduce the amount of calories that are burned. It's exactly what we don't want to happen. So you see where leptin resistance is a problem and we wanna kind of reverse this whole cycle. So with leptin resistance, this could be the reason that a lot of diets fail to promote long-term weight loss. If you're leptin resistant, losing weight reduces your fat mass and that leads to a reduction in leptin level. So vicious cycle. We don't want this leptin resistance going on. So it could be from the many sources of inflammation that we have in our lives. We have inflammation that can come from so many sources. Sometimes it can be other out of balance hormones and it can be the inflammatory foods we're eating. It can be the inflammation from pain, chronic pain. There can be a variety of sources of inflammation and that can contribute as well as excess fat that can contribute to leptin resistance. And then also free fatty acids. So when we have a lot of extra free fatty acids floating in our system and that can happen again from a lot of the same things that cause inflammation, the environment, unhealthy lifestyles, processed foods. Basically, when we have those free fatty acids floating around, that increase the fat, that could increase the fat metabolites in our system and interfere with our leptin signaling. So we want less of those free fatty acids floating around. And then having a high leptin level, having elevated uh, uh, levels of leptin for a long period of time, almost like when you're insulin resistant and diabetic, long periods of high insulin being um, produced, then our bodies become more resistant to it. So just like that, just having the high leptin levels for a long period of time can cause us to become leptin resistant. 
So inflammation, high free fatty acid levels, and high leptin levels themselves can cause us to become leptin resistant. Now there's been a lot of money put into drug companies trying to find an answer to this so they can find that perfect weight loss medication and supplement companies. Now there's not one perfect supplement or drug that can uh, reverse the leptin resistance. So there's some lifestyle changes though that you can make. So let's talk a little bit about those. Avoiding processed foods. So those processed foods can increase the free fatty acids and the inflammation. So we're going to avoid the processed foods and that would be foods that just have a lot of words in their ingredient list is one thing to think about. So if it's foods from the earth and they're not processed, if there's tons of ingredients and things you can't pronounce in them, they're processed. And that would include some high fructose foods. So avoiding high fructose foods. And not, I'm not talking about fruit. I'm talking about added fructose, like in baked goods, in sugar, high fructose corn syrup that could be in your sodas, that could be in ketchup, that could be in salad dressings. So looking for that high fructose corn syrup and keeping that out of our lives. Eating soluble fiber. I always talk about eating fiber on this channel, but particular soluble fiber, particularly soluble fiber helps our gut health and helps our leptin resistance. So remember my goal of usually 30 to 35 grams of fiber. Exercising, physical activity helps to re reverse leptin resistance. And just like I talked about le last week, the strength training can help a lot. Sleeping, getting that seven to nine hours of sleep that we talked about last week, super important for both the ghrelin and the leptin resistance. And then lowering our tri triglycerides. And that's a fat, a, a, a blood fat that we can test with our cholesterol panels with our primary care doctors and figure out if they're high. If your triglycerides are high, I like people to be in the low 100s or less. If they're high, that can make you more leptin resistant. So that's one thing you can easily check. And then eating more protein and eating more healthy fats like I talked about last week. So if you haven't watched last week's video, I would like for you to watch that. Also avoiding strict calorie restriction. So like with the ghrelin from last week, we don't wanna have these calorie swings of being super strict and starving our bodies because then we're gonna become more leptin resistant. So thank you so much for watching. Please comment down below if you've suffered from weight gain during perimenopause and if any of these tips have helped you or if you've tried any of the things that we talked about and seen success. We all need, are in this together and we need to talk more about perimenopause and how it affects us and how we can learn from each other and thrive and reclaim our feminine energy and rebalance our hormones. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks for joining me. Please subscribe, like, share, and leave me your comments down below and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Friday. I'll be back next week talking about adiponectin and how that contributes to weight gain in perimenopause. Thanks for joining me today.